optical art. Okay, I hope you watch this entire video. I, you might not understand how FIP circles work. You might think I'm, I'm insane and crazy, but I, if you watch this entire video and, and you, you understand what I'm trying to show you, you will understand why it is very possible that Bitcoin could crash 80%. This has happened in the past. It will happen again. And I believe the stock market is going to crash around 40%. I have charts to back this up. So watch this video all the way through. If you don't, it is your loss. So I'm going to cover each one of these charts in detail. This is the chart I used to predict the top at 65K. We hit this exactly. We came down. We are now pushing up. People are getting super bullish. Every single YouTuber out there say we're going to 100,000. We're going to 200,000. I can tell you right now that if we push up, your target is right here at 100,000. If it's later, it'll be 122,000. That is a target to the upside, but I do not believe that's going to happen. I'm going to show you why. This is very important. This is the most important chart you can look at right now. Bitcoin versus the US dollar. This is the 2nd of January 2017. This blue line right here is the 22nd of January 2018. The dollar was coming down. Bitcoin pushed up. And look how much. Uh, the US dollar dropped a total of 14.90%. Bitcoin pushed up 2,500%. As the dollar was pushing up, it pushed up a total of 10.82%. Bitcoin had a drop of, right here, 83.63%. The dollar kept pushing up. Finally, the dollar started coming down. This is when we had a COVID crash. The dollar started coming down. Bitcoin pushed up. So the dollar dropped 13.24%. Bitcoin pushed up 1,474%. Now look at the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar is pushing up. From this point right here, this is our resistance for the dollar right here. So if we push up, now, now keep in mind right here, the dollar pushed up 10.82%, causing Bitcoin to drop 83%. If the dollar continues to push up 9.13%, which is less than is 10.82%, that would bring Bitcoin down at least 80%. And that is down around you know $12,000 to $10,000. I don't think we'll go that low. I think we have a target that will hold support before that point happens. But you need to understand, if, if the dollar is pushing up, Bitcoin is going to come down. You can see the dollar is pushing up right now. If the dollar continues up, Bitcoin is going to go down. This is a bull trap. The, the elite, the top 1%, the, the few that own Bitcoin, I'm going to cover this in this video as well. But I just want to make this very clear. If the dollar continues up, Bitcoin's going to drop. Yes, it's pushing up now, but again, this is manipulation. I know you probably don't want to hear that. Oh, well, if, it, if it's going down, it's not manipulation, but it's going up, it's manipulation. Guys, you're being manipulated. The bubble is about to pop. This chart, guys, it, and I'm trying to show you, this goes along with the Dow and the DXY. This is the Dow Jones above, right here. This is the Dow Jones. This is Bitcoin. Right here was the, the 13th, the 12th of February. Well, this was, I can't get it right on it. But this is the 13th of February. This is the 12th of February. This is the 23rd of March. This is back in 2020 out of COVID crash. Look, the Dow dropped 38.34%. Bitcoin dropped a total of 62%. So this is very clear. When the markets come down, Bitcoin comes down as well. You can see when the market pushed up, look, we pushed up a total of, this This is the Dow. The Dow has pushed up a total of, what, 95%, right? So how much has Bitcoin pushed up? Bitcoin has pushed up a total of, in total, we talked about 65K, it pushed up 1,500%. Uh, My point is, if we have another major correction with the Dow Jones, the S&P, and the NASDAQ, Bitcoin is going to come down and the dollar is going to push up. This, this is the chart that I've been telling you about. Look, look at the monthly down here. Look, look at the, uh, the uh, MACD. And, and again, I, I've, I've showed you this. You might not understand flip circles like I said, but I know that this is a point. I have another chart that shows that we're potentially going to have a major correction. You can see that this is a support level right here. This is our next major support right here. This is where we bottomed right here on... This was uh, the 2nd of March, 2020. If we come down, this is your next support right here. This will be your support for the Dow Jones if we have a major correction. Uh, all the way down here to potentially 20,600, 20, right? 
that is a drop of, from where we topped out, of around 40%. Right here, you can see, look, when our COVID crash, the Dow dropped around 38%. That caused Bitcoin to drop around 68%. If we have a 40% drop with the Dow Jones, Bitcoin's going to drop twice as hard, which is going to mean Bitcoin can drop around 80%. You can clearly see, when we hit this this green ring, we had a rejection. We hit this green ring, we had a rejection. We hit this white ring, we came down. This is when we had our COVID crush. We are at this next ring. I told you, October. October and November, we're going to have a lot of downside. I expect this to continue. We're going to continue to move down this ring until we bottom and hit support. If that support does not hold, your next support level is going to be all the way down here at potentially uh, 12,600. I'm expecting one hell of a stock market correction. Look at the MACD right now. You can see how overextended the um, moving averages are on the MACD. Notice that you can see the uh, bars are starting to come down. It's going to come into the red eventually. Uh, back here, this was um, uh, the 2nd of January 2018. Notice that we started coming down, right? The the Dow started coming down, we pushed up, we came down, we pushed up, we came down, and then we pushed up and we came down. So again, I'm telling you, we are way overextended. It is about to come down, and it's right at the point I told you it was going to happen around October and November. Again, if you understand how these charts work, you can already see we're getting rejected and coming down. And, and again, I just showed you what happens when the Dow came down, it's 38%, Bitcoin drops, dropped around 62%. So let's go to this next chart. And this is also important, and you, you need to pay attention to this. This right here, this was, this right here was our, this, this was our great, the Great Depression back in 1929. And notice what happens. We hold support, right? We held support, support, support. We pushed up and we dropped down, created a new support level, right? We pushed up, and look what happened. You dropped below the support, right? And this is October 1st. Maybe this is why people think that when I say October 1st, we're going to have a crash. I'm just saying October 1st. When you drop below support, it becomes resistance. You drop down to support, support, support. Same thing happened. We found a new support level. Support, 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 support. And then we broke below. Now it is resistance. And guess what? Right here, October 1st. Yeah, October 1st is when it initiated. But look, it took time. But as soon as we broke below support, it became resistance. It was October 1st. Let me bring this up so you can see this. October 1st, right here. That doesn't mean we have to crash on October 1st. Look how much time passed before we bottomed right here. This was a total of 518 days. I'm just saying it initiated on October 1st. As soon as support becomes resistance around October 1st, that is when you start having a correction. We had a new support level, right? Look. Same thing. Now we are underneath the support level as resistance. And guess what? This is October 1st. I'm not saying we have to crash on October 1st. I'm saying this is when it initiates. And that is what I'm saying. That is part of that support level I gave in the other chart. So if you look right here, 19,467, that would be a drop of from our top, roughly 40%. I'm telling you, if, if the stock market crashes 40%, Bitcoin is going to crash around 80%. This is a very important chart. This shows you going all the way back since the Great Depression. You hold support above a trend line. When it becomes resistance around October 1st, for some reason, don't know why, that, is the, that initiates the drop down to support. You hold support. You get below it as resistance. October 1st, bam, down we come. New support level. Support, support. Becomes resistance. We've already tested the support once. We push back up. You can see we're coming down. So I'm telling you. October 1st is when it initiates. I'm not saying the crash is on October 1st. That's impossible. We're not going to drop 40% in one friggin' in one friggin' day. But I'm saying we're already headed down. This here, this is the chart, the same chart I predicted the last stock market crash. If you guys have been following me, you know about this. This this I predicted the crash before COVID using this chart. And you might this might look crazy to you. It looks like you know orbital trajectories or the solar system, but there's a method to this madness. I'm telling you, this red ring right here is going to keep us down. We're going to move down this red ring. It is possible we could push up and test this. If that happens, hey, expect Bitcoin to push up more, but it will stop. 
if the Dow pushes up, look, I'll give you this target right now. All right. If you want to access these charts to get these targets, that's up to you. But I'm going to give this to you right now. If the Dow pushes up, it's not going higher than 35,000, potentially 35,400. That's it. That's the top. That's when I'm going to short the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P. And if it does push up, expect Bitcoin to push up with it because that's what happens. If the markets are up, Bitcoin is up. If the markets come down, Bitcoin comes down. Let me show you this chart on the larger scale. Again, this is when I predicted the crash way back in the day. Notice that this orange ring, where it intersects this red ring, this is where we had our crash right here. This was back uh, the 4th of February, 2020. If you'll notice, this next ring out here, we were below this, this orange ring, where this red ring intersects. It wasn't much of a drop. We dropped a total of, well, if you come all the way to the bottom, that was around 10%, which is a pretty substantial drop. You can see what's happening right now. This is the next point where you get a red ring and an orange ring intersecting. And I'm telling you, we are about to have one major drop. And if that happens, again, the Dow dropped 38% or 30 some odd percent. Bitcoin dropped over 68%. And look, look at the, this is Bitcoin on the monthly. Now we can go back. I'm just going to really push this up and show you something. And look, now I want you to look at the MACD and the RSI. Again, this is on the monthly. So I'm going to put a vertical line here. Uh, let's see, put a vertical line right here, right before we had our drop, right? And this is pretty much right here where we topped out back in 2000. This is December 1st, 2013, right? And then notice right here, notice the RSI right down here. You can see that we had, look, we topped out, we came down, and we we're flatlined all the way to this point right and notice I'm just gonna I'm gonna, before we started pushing back up I'm gonna put a vertical line here before we pushed up right so how much did we drop back here so we dropped a total of 88 percent right let me leave this up here so you can see it so from this point to this point we dropped a total of 87 percent okay so let's let's bring this back down a bit and let's put a vertical line here right right here where we peaked this is when it went from blue, these, these bars here went or green from, from dark green to light green. You can see how overextended the, um, the moving averages are. And, and look what happens right here. And let me put a vertical line right here where we bottomed. All right? So you can see some similarities here. I'm going to get rid of this so you can see it. I'm just trying to show you where I'm at on the chart. So we had all of this time. We were, look, flat line. Flat line here. Flat line here, right? And how much did we come down? Well, let's measure. We came down a total of 82%. And the same thing happened right here. Look, vertical line right here where it went from dark green to light green. All right, so look, how much did we come down? We came down a total of 68%. Look how overextended the MACD is right now. I mean, we are way the hell up here. And look at the similarities right here. I'm going to put another vertical line uh, right here where the dark green starts turning to light green. And look, look where we're coming down. Now we're flatlined, right? We're flatlined right here. Totally matching what's going on here. So again, what I'm saying is right here, we came down and went flat. We came down and went flat. We came down and it is going to continue to be flat. And what's going to happen? The same thing that happened, well, I have to really zoom in here. You can see what happened. I mean, it's, it's so so small compared to our current, how far we've rallied. But you can see the, the moving averages started coming down. We moved down into the red. Let me zoom out a bit. Same thing happened here. The moving averages started angling down. You got your cross. It started coming down. We went from green to red. That's when we dropped 82%. The same thing happened here. You can see that we, the moving averages kind of went sideways, but you can see the bar started coming down. Uh, the, the, the stock RSI started coming down. But right here, I'm telling you, look at this. We're way overextended. The same thing is playing out. We've already leveled off to go flat until we drop. And if we drop, every time we drop, 87%, 82%, 68%, if we have a drop from our top, and we drop around 80, 80 some percent, you know, right here. 83 percent takes us down to below ten thousand dollars. Again, I don't think we'll drop to ten thousand dollars. This is just showing you how overextended we are and how far we might have to come down. 
this chart right here, if you'll notice, I mean, this goes back a good ways. You know, every time we, we get caught in these patterns, right now, this right here, this was uh, 2013, 2014. Resistance, support, resistance, support, broke below it, and, and we had a drop, right? Uh, if we go forward, and notice right here, we bottomed, this is this yellow moving average, this is the 200 weekly moving average, we bottomed on it. We bottomed on it again. We got caught in this descending triangle pattern, and we dropped. We dropped right down to the 200 week. Uh, this is when we had a COVID crash. Uh, we we started pushing back up. Everybody's getting bullish. We pushed up a total of 59%. Everybody's like, oh, we're going to the moon. Well, we didn't go to the moon. We crashed, and we crashed down to where? Right down to the 300 week moving hour. So I'm telling you, it is very possible. I see that right now we are above this. I mean, I don't know if you want to keep adjusting this. I it, Maybe this, we'll have to see. This is on the uh, weekly. This could come right back down below. If you'll notice, you know, if we put this like this, how much were we above this before? I'm not saying we can't go higher. Like I said, if the markets push up, we will go higher. But how much did we push above this last time? We pushed above it by about 8.39%. How much are we above this now? Uh, 8.39%. So again, what I'm telling you that is this is a fake out, guys. This is tricking people to buy in, and I'm, I'm going to cover some other things as well. But I do believe what's going to happen is we are going to come back down. Again, this is a bull trap. It's suckering people in. The the elite are buying you know this Bitcoin. And put, this isn't mostly retail. This, this is large institutional money buying in to push it up, to get people to FOMO in, and then it's going to come crashing down. Just like here. Everybody got really, really bullish. And then do people forget what happened? It just dropped straight down. You don't think that can happen again? And if it does, I'm just trying to show you this is the target to watch. And I'm just, the Dow Jones already showed you why it's potentially going to have a crash. But if you come down, this is your target. If this continues to push up, your first target is going to be right here around this. This is your first target, 19,427. I don't know where these are going to be at. I'm just kind of guessing here. But if this continues up like this, you know, the 300 weekly moving average might be down here around 13,000. So I don't think we're going to drop to 10,000. But I think 19,427 to potentially 13,190 is very likely. We do know that we have bottomed on this this 200 weekly once, twice. We know we bottomed on this 300 weekly once. So these are targets to watch if we have a drop. Right now, and again, I mean, I'm showing you the charts. The charts clearly show that this is the point we're going to get rejected to have this correction, right? This chart here. Uh, not to mention uh, this chart right here. Uh, my, my Dow Jones chart, again, this also shows this is the point, just because every time when when, these, when the orange ring, if you're below the orange ring and you cross the um, the red ring, you get a correction. Uh, orange ring is resistance, red ring, you get a correction. Orange ring as, as resistance cross the red ring, or when, when these two intersect, so I'm saying we are going to come down. The Dow Jones is about to have a major correction. So this is just the charts alone. Right here, uh, this is China. China is having a, a power crisis. Yeah, I can play parts of this. You can see that they're having power outages. There's a shortage of, um, I guess, uh, coal or something like that. So the lights are out, and this is you can just see the street lights or just the traffic right now. So they're having power outages. You've got Evergrande. Uh, this is this is a real estate bubble that's popping in China, which is going, which is like 70% of their GDP. This is major. This is this. If this continues, this is going to have effects globally. Global, the global economy, the world market. Uh, right here, uh, record shipping backlogs. There's supply shortages all around the world. So that's that's part of the reason why you're getting inflation. It's because the prices of things are going up because you can't get the things people need. Uh, and in Europe, this is this is worldwide too. Uh, gas prices here in the U.S. are going up. It's this energy price surge. Um, Natural gas hits all-time high. Uh, right here, the debt ceiling, this is another issue. Now, I will say that every time they talk about not passing the debt ceiling, right, right now the Republicans are trying to hold it back. I, for whatever reason, this was put out October 4th, 13 days before um, they decide to raise the debt ceiling or not. Janet Yellen put out a thing saying if they don't raise it, this can be catastrophic for the economy and the markets. I, I think they will pass it. They're just going to, you know, take it to the last minute, but this is this is going to be bearish because people are going to get worried about it and that's going to send markets down more. I do think they will pass it. If they don't pass it, I agree it will be catastrophic. Uh, right here, uh, 
<laughs> every single industry that uses electronics, whether it's uh, graphics cards for computers, computers themselves, car manufacturers, you know, this is Intel, this is Intel CEO chip industry will struggle into 2023. 2023, there's going to be chip shortages. This is catastrophic for the electronics. I mean, it's just going to get really bad. There are supply shortages for all kinds of stuff. They can't get aluminum to make aluminum cans. There's there's places where there's the shelves are empty because they can't get products delivered. Uh, they're, they're somewhere in Texas, they're paying truck drivers around some, some crazy amount, like $14,000 a week to drive trucks because there's a labor shortage. Uh, right here, COVID. I mean, it's down more than it was back in... Um, uh, April 29, 2020, but you're still getting spikes in cases. Uh, 628,000 new cases per day. That's per day. So these are people are getting sick, not going to work, also causing issues with you know products not being uh, made, uh, supply shortages. All of this is coming to a head. And I'm telling you, whether you understand these FIB circles or not, I know that this is a point where we're going to have a correction. And I said it was going to be in October through November. And this chart right here, uh, well, this chart shows me clearly what's going to happen. So this is three charts showing me that we are going to have a correction for the Dow Jones. And I just showed you when the Dow Jones corrected, Bitcoin corrected. And that causes the dollar to push up. And guys, Bitcoin is a hedge against the U.S. dollar. So if the dollar continues up, if the dollar pushes up 9%, Bitcoin's going to drop around 80%. That's why I'm saying the 200 weekly and 300 weekly is a point to buy. I'm not telling anyone to sell. I'm just saying it is very possible we're going to have a major correction soon. So at the very least, set a stop loss. If you made enough profit, take your profit. It's up to you. The other thing, uh, Grayscale. Equity of almost 3.1% of Bitcoin holdings. So, so originally launched in 2013 as Bitcoin Investment Trust, BIT, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust offers investors opportunity to gain exposure to the leading cryptocurrency via an open-end private trust that holds in excess of 649,130 Bitcoin, 7.78% to date, equating to almost 3.1% of Bitcoin's current or current circulating supply. And then you have this, uh, uh, what is this, MicroStrategy, uh, they hold, <laughs> the, they hold. They're one of the largest holders right now. Uh, part of the company buy another five thousand five hundred cryptocurrency. I mean, they they own a large portion too. So you have you have a select few that own so much Bitcoin, and at a at a, at a drop of a hat, if they decide to sell, they control the markets. They can push it up. They can drop it. You've got other look, Tesla owns uh, one point three point. Let's see. 1.3 billion micro strategies to 3.16 uh, 1 billion uh, square 220 million so you got these large companies or these these institutions that, that have a large amount of Bitcoin if they want to sell look if it drops they write it off as a loss if it goes up they make money but they want retail and others to buy in to push the price up because they're making money off of it, and as soon as they decide to sell, it's going to drop. People are going to panic, and it's going to crash harder. So again, I'm just telling you, things are bad. And I'm telling you, if, whether you understand these charts or not, I'm expecting one hell of a correction for the Dow Jones. If the Dow Jones drops 40%, just like the Dow dropped 30% back here, causing Bitcoin to drop 60%, if the Dow drops 40%, guys, right here, if we hit this target, Bitcoin will drop 80%. And I, I hope you guys understand why I'm saying this and why I'm so bearish. Whether we push up or drop, I'm telling you, ultimately, this is a bull trap. We are going to come crashing down. You can access all of these charts I just showed you on my website right here. Just go to the website. The link will be pinned in the first comment in the description. Uh, if you want to access Bitcoin charts, it is $39 a month. That includes altcoins, Discord, and Twitter. Stocks is separate. It's $59 a month. And tutorials teaching how to create these charts. Guys, that's it. Till the next video.